When the pandemic began, many of us went home and if we could, kept working. Some of us discovered we were even more productive at home without all the wasted time of meetings and things that we didn't need to be at and distractions at the office. And also avoiding the commute, well, that was a special treat. But now the fun times are ending for many. Earlier this month, the Wall Street Journal featured a front page story. The more bosses are ordering staff back to the office, telling workers they should use an existing hybrid schedule or come to the office on more days in 2023. Which is why we found it interesting that the state of Oregon is not changing its pandemic era policies for remote work for state employees. And yes, that policy does allow agencies to use taxpayer money to bring workers back from the state they're living in to attend meetings or trainings in Oregon. We'll have more on that in a little bit. According to the Oregon Department of Administrative Services, 7,691 state employees work full time away from the office, but in the state of Oregon. So that might be someone working from home, for example, in the Portland area, but working for a state agency in Salem. But wait, there is much more. Another 494 work full time away from the office and they don't live anywhere close to Oregon. All right, some actually live relatively close in Southwest Washington or Idaho, for example, but a whole bunch live in states a lot farther away. Granted, they are a small percentage of the roughly 40,000 state employees in Oregon, but those numbers, they're not nothing. As I drilled down, I found that some of the biggest agencies had the biggest number of remote workers, probably logical. The Department of Human Services, for example, has 2,446 people working remotely in Oregon and another 157 working in other states. The Oregon Health Authority has 1,281 workers who are remote and in Oregon and another 99 who live in other states but work full time for the state of Oregon. Now I asked the state for a list of all workers who live in a state outside of Oregon. There are some in Washington, about 176, so let's not count them. That leaves more than 300 full-time workers in states that include Minnesota, Michigan, California, Arizona, North Carolina, Tennessee, Florida, Georgia, Kentucky, Texas, Arkansas, Utah, Mississippi, New Mexico, South Carolina, Nevada, Maine, New York, Connecticut, North Dakota, Wisconsin, and I've probably missed a few. The job titles range from information specialist to policy analyst to office specialist and others. And, you know, just from the sound of that, maybe they can be done from anywhere. But I also did find one title for corrections officer, and that person's living in Texas. So not exactly sure what's up with that one. I asked the Oregon Department of Human Services how much money they've spent bringing people back from out of state for meetings. It totaled around $4,000 for the first nine months of last year. Now, I know. That's pocket change when you think about the budget of that agency. And it's even less when you think about the entire state budget. But still, your tax money is paying to bring someone back to Oregon who has chosen to live in a different state. The Oregon Department of Administrative Services issued a statement saying it's similar to when we cover the cost of employees to attend trainings or conferences out of state or when we cover the cost of employees who are duty stationed elsewhere in the state and they are asked to travel to a central workplace. All right. I was hoping to get someone from the state to do an on-camera interview to explain why taxpayers should be footing the bill for those folks. The governor's office didn't even respond to my email and the Department of Administrative Services said sorry, they had no one available. But I was able to get an interview a few weeks ago with the Oregon State Treasurer, Tobias Reed. He's a Democrat and as an elected official, he can set his own policies and he has. He's all for rem remote work flexibility, but not for paying to bring employees back for meetings. We still believe that there are advantages to be gained by being flexible, that we can hire talent in, in more places. Uh, I still believe that, that we are better off uh, when, we, when we come together, when we can be creative and collaborative. Uh, and, and I still believe that, that employers get to determine uh, the, the terms of employment when, when a person comes to work and how they do that work. And, and I still believe we, we don't pay for people to, uh, to commute. It's, uh, it's their right to choose where they want to live and, and our expectation that they'll get themselves to work. So if somebody is working in Alabama and wants to work for the living in Alabama, wants to work for the Treasury, you're not going to pay to fly them in for regular meetings? No. Because some state agencies are. I'm treasurer. I get to uh, exercise my responsibility to, uh, to, to the Treasury. Uh, and, and you know, the leadership that I want to provide here is, is based on that recognition that, that flexibility is, is smart. Uh, but 
we work for Oregonians, uh, not the not the other way around. And we're going to keep that in mind as we as we make that, you know, our efforts to, to balance those uh, those competing uh, concerns. But no, I, I don't think that uh, that that someone. Uh, you know, as they as they exercise their their right to choose where they live, uh, the beneficiaries of our our funds uh, should not should not pay for their commutes. But not everyone agrees with Mr. Reed, who, by the way, does have remote workers in other states. If we don't count people living in Washington State, he has ten. So, what's the justification for the rest of state government? The Department of Administrative Services issued this statement that reads in part. As we come out of the pandemic, our top priority remains ensuring that Oregonians are well served. When this can be accomplished and when the business needs of the agency can be met, we are finding that continuing to offer remote work as an option for an, is an important tool for recruitment and retention, especially as many private and public sector employers have moved rapidly in this direction. Well, OK, but the state might want to take another look at the headlines recently because the times, as they say, they are a changing. NBC reports that Disney recently told employees they'd have to spend four days on site each week. The CEO, Bob Iger, wrote, nothing can replace the ability to connect, observe and create with peers that comes from physically being together. It's one of several national companies which have increased their in-person requirements. Finally, some Oregon lawmakers are frowning on the idea of taxpayer money being used to bring Oregon workers back from other states for meetings. I'm told a bill that has at least some bipartisan support will be introduced into the latest legislative session on Monday. That's a good thing, in my opinion. We'll see how it goes. In the meantime, as always, we wonder what you think of the remote work policy. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Send us your thoughts. The email is the story at kgw.com or you can call our phone number and leave a message 503-226-5090. I look forward to hearing from you.